Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to our Institution of Global Professionals International Korean webinar. So thank you so much for joining with us in this live session, another brand new episode. Yes. Here is our host. Hello, ma'am. Hello, good afternoon. Good good afternoon, Miss Nasreen. Okay, could we start now? Sure. Okay. So, hello and good day, world. Welcome to the International Free Webinar of our Institution of Global Professionals. Thanks for joining us on this wonderful day and another day of learning. My lovely audience, today I am your host again. It's Tuesday. Have a learning every Tuesday. Teacher Nari from the Philippines. I am proud to be associated with IGP as a global member and I am honored and delighted to welcome you all in our Institution of Global Professional Free Webinar. And thank you for all the joining us today. And it's my humble request and pleasure for all of you to stay with us till the end of the session. And for I am sure that we do have a lot of e takes away pay off from this, especially from this webinar. Don't forget to talk, share, and mention your friends in the comment box that we have. So let's watch together and learn together. We believe that the power is gained by sharing knowledge, not Hurting it. Once again, I'm teacher Nori Lin, your volunteer host and a member of IGB from the Philippines. We know that every single day, some of us is new participants joining us in our, so we, we could have a little uh, background. What is IGP? It is a leading one online skills development institute with the thousands of learnings worldwide. We are entrusted with international recognition in an educational institution that provides social work, organize webinars, trainings, offline and online courses, uh, trained speakers and coaches from all over the world. Our mission is to empower people and enhance skills and potentials. We do have already done with 680 as you imagine, we do have 680 webinars, which is very successful. And we believe that you are all getting benefited in your personal as well as the professional life. We wish you that all remain with us with this long journey with us. Okay. Let me remind you again that don't forget to share, tag, comment, and mention your friends in the comment box that we have because your attachment encourages us to do better and best service and our lovely, you, you as you as a lovely learners, okay? So today we are presenting the, the webinar 681 with the title Epistemology and Methodology in Research with our 609, no, 681 speaker. We do have Mr. Rafael Kevin Ainagal from the Philippines. But before we start, okay? With our mantra with IGP, what would be the mantra of IGP? Feed your skills. Okay, so let me first uh, welcome our guests, our educators, especially our guests today. Ma'am Emily and Gloria, Marjan, Joanna, Isaiah, AK. Okay, so welcome. Ma'am Gemma, Sir Joseph. Okay, welcome all. Okay, so before we start with our uh, resource speaker for this session with the 681, he is his um, head teacher one, a Calibo Integrated uh, Special Education Center at DepEd Calibo, an associate professor one, a part time uh, in the University of San Agustin. He is also a clinical uh, instructor and lecturer at Aklan Polytechnic College. He is also a former district research coordinator at DepEd and a former district LRMDS coordinator. Please welcome in our virtual stage, Mr. Rafael Kevin I. Nagal. Good afternoon, sir. Hi, Ma'am Nori. Good afternoon and thank Good you. Good afternoon. 
<laughs> okay. That that. How are you today, sir? Feeling good. Okay, so I know you are so ready with your presentation and you, we are so ready to, to hear about your expertise. So take it away, sir. Have your floor. Okay, thank you so much. Well, I already shared my screen. Um, I just want to confirm if you can see that as well, ma'am. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you so it's much. It's ready, ready. All right, so let me um, begin my slide. All right, so, um, well, first off, I would like to thank the Institute of Global Professionals for giving me this opportunity to present my ideals, my principles, as well as um, the knowledge that I have with regard to research. So I will be discussing the topic about epistemology as well as its relation to methodology in research. So once again, this is Rafael Kevin Ainagal from the Philippines. Right? So the objectives of today's topic is first for the audience or the participants to identify the four elements before you conduct a research. So, of course, um, one of these four elements would be the epistemology. And with that, you have to describe the three epistemological approaches, and that includes objectivism, constructionism, as well as subjectivism. The third objective is for the audience to describe the various theoretical perspective and their alignment to the epistemology. The fourth being the ability to exemplify different theoretical perspectives in each epistemological house. Fifth, to exemplify methodologies in each epistemological house. And finally, to differentiate methods and methodology. Okay, so with that, I would like to know what comes up to your mind whenever you hear the word research design. So, can somebody type your answer in the comment section? Okay. All right. So, I actually don't see anybody typing. So, let me ask um, Teacher Nori, would you mind telling me what comes to your mind whenever you hear um, the word research design? Wow, Mom Gemma said um, it's about the truth. Okay. All right. Okay. So, well, um, let's take a look at this one. Now, methodology is actually the one that we associate with research design. Usually, when I say research design, this is only all about methodology. And of course, some people would actually interchange methodology with the word methods. Well, are they the same? Are they true? Are they false? Or whatnot? So we will be un uncovering the difference between these two as we discuss the higher of the four elements. So we will be discussing epistemology later on followed by theoretical perspective and then of course we go to methodology and finally its specific methods so take note of the four elements in conducting research first um, the one in the highest in the hierarchy we have epistemology this is where um, this actually the one that discusses everything all about your research the framework of your research it should be associated with epistemology. It's like this is the background. This is the backbone of everything about your research. Now, well, epistemology would be best be explained through a theoretical perspective. So a theoretical perspective would actually give the description of the specific epistemology that we will be discussing or that we will be having in a certain research. Finally, based on these two, you can actually craft your research design in the form of a very specific methodology. And finally, for you to be able to come up with a good research product, you need to utilize different methods. 
the methods are the specific steps that you are doing in conducting a research, like creating a sample from a population to analyzing data through statistical analysis. So what are the guiding principles that you need to understand? We start from the bottom. First, what methods do we propose to use in conducting the research? And when you use those methods, what methodology governs our choice and the use of these methods? Third, what do you think will be the theoretical perspective that lies behind the methodology in question? And finally, does that inform the epistemology that we are going to utilize? So these guiding principles are the questions that you should ask yourself prior to conducting a research, prior for you to decide whether it's going to be a hybrid, a qualitative, or a quantitative research. Now let's discuss each of them one at a time. Methods are the techniques or procedures that we use to gather and analyze data related to some research question or hypothesis. For example, your question is what is the level of awareness of students when it comes to smoking cessation program? Then, of course, your method will include the use of survey questions, a Likert scale survey question. Methodology is actually a broader version of the method, wherein um, the specific description, the strategy, the plan of action are being described and explained in very short paragraphs. Finally, the theoretical perspective. This is the philosophy, the guiding principle that informs your methodology that these are the criteria that you need to meet for you to be able to come up with a good research. And finally, the theory of knowledge embedded in theoretical perspective is called your epistemology. So, as mentioned earlier, epistemology is the highest, followed by theoretical perspective, then methodology, and finally the methods. Now, let's define method epistemology as mentioned. So, as mentioned, this is actually um, the theory of knowledge okay, that is embedded in your theoretical perspective. This are actually divided into three major categories. There are actually three. First is objectivism, followed by constructionism. And finally, we have subjectivism. Now, how do we um, describe each of them? So we will identify that as we go along with our discussion. So again, there were three, objectivism, constructionism, and subjectivism. From the terms itself or themselves, you will be able to identify which ones are for which um, based on their literal meaning. So when you say objectivism, it is based on the notion that an objective reality exists, that there is only one reality, there is only one truth, and can be increasingly known through the accumulation of more complete information. Of course, reality will change from time to time. The truth will change from time to time because of new, newly found information. But as of the moment, when we say at current time, then there is only one reality according to objectivism. So it rejects the knowledge that we can create a certain truth. Objectivism really says or it actually provides the idea that one object is always there one reality one idea one truth is for us to uncover for us to discover this is actually the ones that are being used by quantitative researchers okay like from experimental to quasi-experimental, they will be able to find out one reality alone with objectivism. Now, what about constructionism? Contrary to objectivism, constructionism is the one that greatly um, defines um, the ideals of objectivism. According to objectivism earlier, there is only there is already truth that is waiting for us to discover. 
However, in constructionism, well, truth varies from each perspectives. It's like truth, ideals, principles, and meanings are differing or varying from one set of perspectives to another. It's like a multiverse. There are a lot of realities involved. Like, for example, um, when an individual who lives in an indigenous community would believe that his ideas, when it comes to science, are, um, are actually governed by, by the ethnicity of a certain group. On the other hand, um, people who live in the city would actually invalidate his claims and would actually say that science is science. It's actually broad and something like that. So it differs from the set of samples to another set of samples. And that, the meaning is not discovered. It is constructed by people. A good example will be a cross. Um, a cross, well, when you go to Spain, it symbolizes Christianity. However, when you go to somewhere, to a certain um, non-government organization, and it's colored red, then they put another meaning to that. And now it's actually called the Red Cross. So therefore, in constructionism, you construct meaning based on the perspectives of your samples. Now, what about subjectivism? Now, on, when we actually discuss constructionism, the ideals, the principles, the truth, the realities are based on your samples. For subjectivism, the meaning, the ideas, the truth actually are imposed by the researcher to the phenomenon. It's like the researcher himself already is putting an idea on a certain phenomenon. Let's say, for example, the researcher is an advocate of democracy and he hates authoritative rule. Of course, he would impose there his ideals that um, author um, authoritarian rules are not actually humane in nature. So, of course, when he does that, well, the researcher would actually um, also add ideals to that certain phenomenon. Now, unlike constructionism, wherein there is a greater involvement uh, when it comes to the creation of ideas from the subject, from the objects, or from the people, from the samples. Here in subjectivism, the researchers' ideals are the focus. So now let's. Um, if you have any questions, just feel free to. Um, let me know here. Okay. Uh, Ma'am Noreen or, or Ma'am Na Ma Nazreen can actually say something, whether uh, can stop me from talking if there's a question. Okay. Now, so let's have a recap. Now, in epistemology, we have three, objectivism, constructionism, and subjectivism. Again, in objectivism, there is one truth that are waiting for us to identify, to discover. In constructionism, we create ideals or truth based on our samples. In subjectivism, we impose ideals from this, from, uh, to the phenomenon from the researchers. Now, let's take a look at the theoretical perspective. So again, the philosophy underlying the methodology is actually the job of the theoretical perspective. So in epistemology, these should be aligned. For example, in objectivism, the theoretical perspective is positivism. In constructionism, the theoretical perspective is interpretivism, which is actually having a lot of examples, such as symbolic interactionism, phenomenology, and hermeneutics. Finally, in subjectivism, the theoretical perspectives are actually a lot. It could be critical inquiry. It could be feminism. It could be postmodernism. It could be postcolonialism. Okay? So, 
what is positivism? Again, this is under objectivism, which actually states, according to the epistemology, that there is only one truth that is waiting for us to uncover. So most of the time, we use positivism for which type of research? It's experimental research because it focuses on explanation and prediction. So of course, since this is more of quantitative research, it is more of theory verification, such as that's why we actually have these statistical hypotheses. So we have hypothesis testing. So this is very evident when you are doing quantitative research, and more specifically, it's about quasi or experimental research. Now, the theoretical perspective under constructionism is interpretivism. From the term itself, we attempt to understand and explain human and social reality based on the meanings that they put on it. So that's interpretivism. So first um, example under interpretivism would be symbolic interactionism. So one of the examples that I mentioned earlier is about the cross. So some people would actually put meanings on that certain object, the cross itself. So when you put meaning to that, that is symbolic interactionism. Let's say, for example, a Mardi Gras, um, a certain festival. Let's say here in the Philippines, we have the Ati Atihan Festival. So we put meaning on that, on that certain festival, for that certain event. So And thus, it already has its symbolic interactionism. So therefore, a certain meaning is created because of the relationships or interactions between individuals and the society within that certain group of society that has identified that same meaning. So that's symbolic interactionism. In ethnography, wherein you go to a certain locale, a certain um, community, and then conduct your research there, symbolic interactionism is the theoretical perspective. Now, what about phenomenology? Well, phenomenology is the philosophy or the science of experience. So here, we actually get the meaning through the experiences of other persons. So, like for example, the experiences of people who were abused, people who were victims of rape, people who were, uh, who were able to experience, um, let's say, bombing or war. So you ask for their um, experiences, and out of those, you accept them as their reality based on their experiences. That's phenomenology. Finally, hermeneutics is actually involved in words, in texts, um, in the act of reading. So here we interpret those that were being told, that were being explained, that were being written um, in manuscripts. So here you provide meanings by asking other people. Like when you interpret um, a certain uh, quote or text in the Bible, that is hermeneutics. Okay? So that's for constructionism. We have three, symbolic interactionism, phenomenology, and hermeneutics. Now finally, for the theoretical perspective under subjectivism, we actually have three. Actually, it's more than this, but let's focus on these three. First is the critical inquiry, followed by feminism and postmodernism. Now, critical inquiry, well, let's have a recap of subjectivism. Earlier, we discussed that subjectivism is when the researcher imposes ideals or his beliefs, his personalities on the phenomenon. The phenomenon is something that we are studying. So, First off, we will discuss critical inquiry. Critical inquiry is actually the research of activists. It's like you are going to criticize a certain rule, a certain reality by giving your own reality or by, by stating your reality on it. So that is critical inquiry. So the major purpose of a critical inquiry is for you to create change in a society. 
like for example you're going to criticize a certain um, um a certain law in your country by providing evidences from other people through your interview um through your documentary analysis so based on that you will be able to criticize the negative effects of those through evidences that you are going to prove through interview and for from focus group discussions and thus you can actually affect change in a societal problem now it's actually the same with feminism however feminism is more specific on the equality of sexes it's like your ideals and principles are more on equality of women's rights so that's feminism finally postmodernism let's dissect that when you say modernism it's associated with progress and innovation well we already know that when there is modernism let's say um you create cities you pave the roads that's already um, progress and innovation well that's the thought of some people however postmodernism rejects modernism it's like you're going to criticize development so that it can be stopped let's say for example there is a certain um, project in your locale that wants to create a dam however you already know that when they create this dam although people would think that this is about progress um, it can actually cause a lot of devastation if not properly implemented so you will try to oppose that through your research which is postmodernism. okay now a good example of a critical inquiry um, under subjectivism is one of the dissertation in the university where i'm taking my um, phd now um, an ISL university at West Visaya State um, University in Iloilo in the Philippines. The title is this one, Kun wala pangilala, wala manchansa, Unmasking Social Justice Issues in the Hiring of Public School Teachers. Now, kun wala pangilala, wala manchansa literally translates to this. If you don't have a backer, if you don't have someone to back you up, you will never get a chance to be hired. This is actually the reality in public school teaching nowadays here in the Philippines. And based on the critical inquiry, um, theoretical perspective of our researcher, let me acknowledge, um, Sir Imake, he was able to prove his reality, um, his subjectivism about this one. Okay, now let's go to the third element, methodology. Well, methodology encompasses the strategy, plan of action, process, or design lying behind the choice and use of particular methods and linking the choice and use of methods to the desired outcomes. So technically speaking, when you say methodology, it literally is the research design. Okay, so on the left side of this uh, table, you will be able to see the methodology in the center, you can see the theoretical perspective, and finally, epistemology on the far right-hand corner. Now, if you could have noticed, they are properly aligned. Now, if you want to gear towards quantitative form of research, if you could have seen here, if you can see my mouse, we have, um, let me put the pen. So these are actually quantitative methodologies so we have here through experimental quasi descriptive correlation and ex post facto so if you could have noticed the theoretical perspective are all positivism and their epistemology is all about objectivism the same goes with ethnography phenomenological research participatory action research hermeneutic phenomeno phenomenology and grounded theory all of these are under the epistemology of constructionism. So ethnography is like um, a methodology for if you want to study a certain community, indigenous people. Now, phenomenological research is more about the study of lived experiences. Participatory action research is when the researcher and the participants 
are actually have the same say in creating the research. It's like the participants can provide inputs on what you're going to conduct to, to, to solve a certain issue. Hermeneutic phenomenology is from the term itself. As mentioned, hermeneutic is the interpretation of texts. Now, grounded theory is when you create um, theories based on truths that you were able to uncover from your participants. Now, if you could have noticed, the third sets under subjectivism are kind of combinations of those under um, constructionism. Okay? So, for example, for critical theory, it's going to be critical ethnography. You're going to criticize, um, let's say, for example, um, the arranged marriages common in ethnic groups. So you're going to criticize that. It's ethnography, but you're going to criticize that certain fact about them. Okay? So we also have postmodernism and so on and so forth. Now, what about methods? Of course, the lowest among the four elements, these are the specific techniques or procedures that you do to gather and to analyze data. So example will be your sampling method, your questionnaire. Uh, how about data? We have statistical analysis, data reduction, and so on and so forth. Well, for example, um, you're going to conduct um, a subjectivism, uh, well, let's say a constructionism um, research or a constructionist research, then your methods should be more focused on qualitative methods, okay? Now, if you could have noticed here, in research methods, it can either be qualitative or quantitative methods. Now, qualitative methods... Example will be you use secondary data, like those that are already written. Uh, we have interviews. We have participant interview or participant observation. Uh, we also have case studies. Now, in quantitative data, you can actually use experimentations, especially if it's an experimental research. You can also conduct surveys. Now, what's the difference between methodology and methods? So as mentioned, the broader one is methodology. It encompasses everything. This is your design. Well, the methods refers to the specific techniques that you're going to do. Now, in the earlier stage, you design the methodology first before you do the specific methods that are appropriate for your research. Now, I have here a set of questions. Um, I hope um, somebody will be able to answer these um, on the comment section. Identify which is method and which is methodology. I'll give you like 30 seconds to answer this one. Okay, so it seems like nobody's answering, but I, I hope that you're answering um, on your end. Okay, so among these math, these um, um, sets of procedures, then we can easily identify that the methodology is actually under number one, seven, nine, and ten. Okay. So analysis of all the procedures, um, explanation of steps, the purpose, to find solutions, and finally to use to achieve the decided objective of the study. And the rest are methods. Now take note uh, that a quantitative methodology, let's say it's a quasi-experimental research, well, it's still under positivism, 
and objectivism and still called the quasi-experimental research. And it can still have qualitative methods. Okay, but still, it's still considered as quantitative. Example, quasi-experimental can have qualitative responses or verbatim that is to support the quantitative data from statistical results. So technically, people would actually say that this is the hybrid um, or the mixed method in research. However, um, well, we can actually say that it's more of quantitative still because you utilize quasi-experimental. Now, um, can somebody tell me what do you call um, the scientific term for planetary alignment? Okay. Well, planetary alignment is called CCG. CCG happens when um, several planets are like they are falling in line just to um, they are arrange themselves so that you can see them in sky like they are in a straight line. Like, that happens like a few weeks ago. Now, in research, these four elements should also be aligned. Why do you, we actually need to ensure that epistemology, theoretical perspective, methodology, and methods must be aligned? First, methods and methodologies are not usually laid out in highly organized fashion, and therefore, it will become messy. It will be more of a maze than a, an outward pathway that is orderly to watch. Now, the, the aim of aligning these four elements is to provide researchers with a sense of stability and direction so that they can build their understanding in a more in a stronger um, ideals. Now, when all elements are aligned, directions of the research process is easier from goal setting to data gathering and data interpretation. And finally, if you are going to defend your research, evaluators will find the study strong and robust because these four elements are properly aligned. Okay, example, in constructionism, this is your epistemology. Symbolic interactionism, that will be your theoretical perspective. So this is under um, interpretivism. Your methodology is ethnography. And finally, your method will be, one of your methods will be participant observation. Another example, your epistemology is objectivism. Of course, it follows the fact that you will be using positivism. Um, a good example will be your survey research, or some people would actually use this as descriptive research. And finally, one of the examples of the methods that you will be using is through the use of statistics. Okay? So, and that, ladies and gentlemen, ends my discussion about epistemology and methodology in research and why um, the four elements should be aligned so that you will have a robust research. Once again, this is Rafael Kevin Nagal. Maraming salamat po from the Philippines. Okay. Thank you, Sir Rafael. That was so amazing sharing your marvelous presentation and giving us your valuable time is really unmeasurable. And I believe our audience too today is blessed by your shared intangible knowledge. And probably some of them will have a clear understanding and the procedure on how to conduct research, especially on the methods and what would be the difference between methods and methodology me myself is really confused what what are uh, they are really differ from each other and now i do have a clear understanding about it okay congratulations sir rafael Thank and then uh okay we will we'll be back to you for a minute so we could have uh, some videos on how to, because our audience uh, uh, later will have the question and answer portion after the quiz. Okay, uh, we have a water break, okay, for a moment. Okay, thank you, sir, Rafael, and congratulations. Welcome.
Okay, it's time for quiz competition. So I believe our audience will be ready for our competition. And I do have we do have a lot of audience in our session today. Angeline, Marjon, Evelyn, Verano, Christian. Thank you for having us today. Uh, Vince, thank you for your time, brother, for this session. And uh, we do have Joanna. We do have Vince, Christian. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so please have time to click the link for our quiz. And after that, we're going to have uh, a top 10 probably for the winners. And we're going to give a certificate okay for a completion of the quiz okay go mom nasreen So we're going to have here in our quiz, please, we do have the link in the comment box and write the code quiz IGP. Okay, thank you for having uh, in our quiz, joining in our quiz, Miss Nika, Maria, Janeline, Vince, Aliano, Hazel, Angeline, Rona, Leia, Sherilyn, Jack, Emily, Kefer, Hazel, JB, I hope I, 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 I pronounce your your name well, okay? Angeline, Joel, Christian, thank you for joining in our quick quiz. Alian, Janeline, Vince, Ricky, Jacqueline, Flomi, thank you for joining us today. J Nanette, Ronella, Carmela, okay? We have your King Waisaya. And uh, Jenny Lien. Okay, so I think I, I believe you are ready now for our quiz, and this is a very exciting part. Okay, because after the quiz completion, you're gonna have the ISO certificate for completion of the quiz. Okay, so I think we are ready for the question number one. Okay, so what is epistemology? It is the nature and theory of knowledge, or it is what is or what exists. Okay? What is epistemology? And na the nature and theory of knowledge, or what is or what exists. Okay, three, two, one, and time is up. So, congratulations to the 97%. Get a correct answer that epistemology, it is the nature and the theory of knowledge. Congratulations! Next, uh, who would be the leading board in our uh, uh, question number one? Okay, congratulations, Sherry Lynn. Top one, Ronila, Emily, Maria, and Jacqueline. Congratulations, ma'am. Okay, so we move on to our second question. Epistemology is a theory of 
Epistemology is the theory of rationalism or knowledge. Okay? Epistemology is the theory of rationalism or knowledge. Five, four, three, two, and one. Time is up. What would be the correct answer? Okay, when we say epistemology, it is the theory of knowledge. Okay, congratulations. A 73% got the correct answer. So this time, who would be the leading on our question number two? So congratulations, Mama Maria, followed by Sherilyn, Janeline, Gemma, and Vince. Okay, congratulations. Next, we move on to our third question. What is methodology? Okay. What is methodology? The method, the methods applied to a field of study or the nature and theory of knowledge. Okay. It is the methods applied to the field of study or it is the nature and theory of knowledge. Two, one, and zero. Time is up. So what would be the correct answer? Congratulations to the 89% get a correct answer. That methodology, this is the methods applied to the field of study. Okay, so who would be leading this time? Show us. Congratulations again. You are on top, Ma'am Sherry Lee, followed by Maria, Ma'am Gemma, Christina. Welcome to the leading board and Ma'am Janeline. Congratulations. Okay. We move on to our next question. Theory to research. Okay, theory to research. It is an objective or inter interpretive? Interpretive. Objective or interpretive? Okay, three, two, one, and zero. Okay, when we say theory to research, this is objective. Congratulations would be leading this time. Congratulations, Ma'am Jenny Lien. Okay, welcome to the top. And followed by Christina. Alex, welcome to the leading board. Ma'am Jack, welcome. And Ma'am Gemma. Okay, next, we move on to our next question. What are research ethics? What are the research ethics it is the standards that protect participants right or a standards that won't help guide researchers okay. three two one and time is up so what would be the correct answer okay congratulations to the 97 percent get answered standard when we say research ethics it is the standard to protect the participants of our research okay so well congratulations uh, mr alex javier you are on top of our leaderboard followed by christina mom jemeline and jack and mom evelyn okay congratulations next we move on to our next question a research hypothesis is also known as a research hypothesis is also known as it is a scientific hypothesis or a casual hypothesis. Okay. It is a scientific hypothesis or it is a casual hypothesis. Three, two, one, and time is up. What would be the correct answer? Congratulations to who got the correct answer that research hypothesis is a scientific hypothesis. Okay. So for this time, we still have Mr. Alex Javier. Congratulations, sir. Followed by Christina, Janeline, Evelyn, and Mam Jacques. Cleared. Okay, so we move on to our next question. So ethics and the research are ethics and research are it is an art important or a thrill to throw to the four wind. Okay, ethics and research are important or a thrill? Okay, congratulations. Who got the correct answer that ethics is really important in research, in conducting research? Okay, so who would be the leading this time? Okay, congratulations, Mom Christina. You are on top, followed by Mom Janeline, Sir Alex, Mom Evelyn, and Mom Jemeline. Congratulations. See? 
Okay, we move on to our next question. Interpretive theories, interpretive theories use blank methodology and research used by a qualitative or quantitative, okay? Interpretative uh, theories use qualitative or quantitative methodology and research. Two, zero, and time is up, okay? What would be the correct answer? Yes, the interpretative uh, theories use qualitative uh, research methodology, okay? Congratulations! So who would be? Congratulations, Ma'am again. Ma'am Christina, you're still on top. Followed by Ma'am Jenny, Sir Alex, Jermaine, and Sir Ricky. Welcome to the learning board. Okay, so we move on to the next question. What is a gap in research? What is a gap in research? It is a question that haven't been answered in a previous research or it is a question that are not important to find the answer to. So what is the gap in research? So five, four, three, two, one, zero. Time is up. Oh, yes. When we say gap in research, it is a question that haven't been answered in the previous researches. Okay. Congratulations. Who would be in our little board, little board during this time? Okay, still, you are on top, Ma'am Christina. Congratulations. Okay, followed by Ma'am Janeline, Sir Alex, Germaline, and Sir Ricky. Okay, so we move on to the next question. This would be the last question, probably. Okay, which of this is the qualitative research methodology? Which of this is a qualitative research methodology? It is ethnography or a cohort study? It is ethnography or a cohort study? Okay, two, zero, and of course, a correct answer. Congratulations, who answered ethnography? Okay, so during this time, who would be in our leaderboard? We will see. Congratulations, Ma'am Christina. Okay, followed by Sir Alex, Ma'am Janeline, Ma'am Gemma, and Sir Ricky. Congratulations. Make sure that we're going to uh, give you the certificate of completion. Okay, so after the session. Congratulations once again. And thank you for uh, actively participating in our session for today. Not only for today, for the other session that you are into. Congratulations and thank you so much for your time. Okay, congratulations to the top 10 winners. Okay, so we're gonna have Christina, Gemini, Ricky, Jacob, Vince, Mom Carmela, Nika, and JB. Okay, congratulations. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations, teachers. Okay, so we move on to our question and answer portion, Mom Nazreen, the Q&A. So we're going to have a short video on how to ask questions to our uh, speaker. Okay, so we're going to see how could we ask questions for our guest speaker by the short video. Go ahead, Mom Na.
Okay, welcome back again, Sir Rafael. Because today, because this session, we, we are going to accommodate questions from our audience. Okay, so audience, please have your question now in the comment box. So I'm going to read your question. So uh, Sir Rafael, we're accommodated. Okay, please type now your questions. Maybe you have uh, some in mind, in mind uh, to make uh, Sir Rafael to answer that. Maybe there are topics that Mr. Rafael uh, is not really clear in your side. Okay, so I think we will wait. Come on, type your questions now. What would be your questions about the topic for today? Etymology, et, epistemology and methodology and research. Okay. We will see if they have questions. We will see in our comment box if we have. Okay, 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 okay. So... We will, while we're all waiting, Sir Rafael, I do have some questions for you while waiting for our audience. Okay, is that okay for you, Sir Rafael? Sure. Okay. Uh, being to those researchers that is the first time to conduct research, what would be your advice for them? Because uh, the, the epistemology and the methodology is really, you know, overwhelming if you are a first-time researcher. So how could be it become uh, simply to them to understand that this would be the steps, this would be the procedure, this would be the the this would be the terms that you need to understand in conducting a research? What would be a piece of advice? Yeah, I would agree with you that for beginners, uh, because you know um, these um, qualitative topics that I discussed earlier is actually. Um, being discussed in the master's and in the postgraduate programs. However, people should actually know that also um, in the undergrad or the, those beginner users. Now, what is being discussed in the undergrad are actually the uh, methodology and the methods alone. So, of course, you can start with those. Um, find which um, type of research you are familiar with so whether it's you can actually group them whether they are qualitative or quantitative so of course you begin with a certain phenomenon you start with a with a certain topic that's the, the ideal one look for research gaps in that certain topic and then afterwards find the methodology that is more appropriate to understand or for you to be able to um, solve that research gap. So go to methodology, then look upwards by identifying which epistemology and theoretical perspective it is under so that you will be guided by the principles under epistemology and theoretical perspective. Now take note sometimes um, in doing your chapter three of the research, you don't discuss epistemology and theoretical perspectives anymore. They are actually ideas that are already given that you understand the principles behind your methodology. So once you already understood the, the theories, the, the theoretical perspectives and the epistemology under that certain methodology, go downward and then look for specific methods for you to be able to um, resolve your research questions. So that's how I actually do it. Okay, thank you for that, Sir Rafael. Okay, now we do have now a question from our audience. It came from um, John Eliza. So good day, Sir Ralph. What are the benefits in learning of epistemology and methodology and making a re and making a research? Well, that's a very good question. I actually um, discussed that. Uh, I think that's in the last part of, of my presentation. I actually mentioned that your um, these four elements from epistemology to theoretical perspective to methodology and methods, they should be aligned. Like, for example, um, you are going to create um, ethnograph um, ethnographic research. This is your methodology, right? So in ethnographic research, of course, 
your methods should be more of qualitative. Sometimes we don't even use the quantitative methods there. So, well, in methodology well, um, of ethnographic research, the theoretical perspective and epistemological principles are being governed by these two for you to be able to come up with a strong methods. So you need to understand what this methodology is all about. And for you to understand that methodology, you need to understand in which epistemological branch it is under and what are the theoretical perspectives that you are going to be governed. Um, a good example is this one. Um, for lived experiences, uh, the, the, theor the theoretical perspective will be phenomenology. And the methodology is phenomenological research. And of course, we understand that this is under um, constructionism. Now, sometimes we actually kind of combine them with another interpretative um, type of research. Let's say, for example, grounded theory. Okay. Now, um, in phenomenological research, we look for answers that are kind of unique. Like it doesn't have any, the same answer from other participants or from other respondents, from your other key informants. It's different. Like for example, a person um, who is being, uh, who is a victim of rape would actually say, um, I love it. It's contradicting with other answers that they despise the, the, the rape incident itself. So you look for that. You look for that specific answer that is unique, that is in phenomenology, it, because it is governed by um, phenomenology under a theoretical perspective. However, in ethnographic research and in grounded theory, you look for um, answers that are kind of the same with most of your participants. Let's say, for example, um, your studies about critical thinking skills. So um, you, you want to create um, a theory about that, that um, when they eat a lot, they understand more. So most of your respondents would actually say, um, I eat healthy food. The other one would actually say, I eat a balanced diet. So they are actually the same um, theme of answers. And you get that certain answer. That will be the idea the, or the truth that you will be presenting because it's like the same with everyone else. So if you could have noticed, even though they are under the same constructionism, the theoretical perspectives or the guiding principles for that certain methodology between um, grounded theory and phenomenology are different. So therefore, if you don't understand how to analyze these data under those principles in epistemology and theoretical perspectives, then your research will be fragile from the um, for the evaluator's evaluation um, or critique. Like they wouldn't understand why did you choose these answers of, of the participants over the this answer, which is unique, more unique than this one when you're using phenomenology as the theoretical perspective or something like that. Or for example, you are going to utilize um, quasi-experimental research, but you did not follow the protocols like um, you, or, I mean, you're going to utilize um, true experimental research and you did not follow the ethical protocols. You did not follow the, the random assignment aside from the randomization. Uh, so something like that is kind of, uh, of like the weakest link in defending your research, especially if your evaluators are quite um, well-versed when it comes to um, epistemology, theoretical perspectives, the alignment of these four elements. Okay, thank you for that, Sir Rafael. And then with your discussion, I realized that this one is really, we need to understand researchers that this four that you have discussed, Sir Rafael, is really interconnected to each other. Otherwise, your research will very, uh, uh, you cannot really understand what is your research is all about. If you're really 
if you can't understand the the steps on it if you don't understand what would be the proper uh method that you're going to use okay so congratulations sir rafael congratulations and um your topic indeed your topic indeed is really helpful for us as an educators and as a researchers and we love to see you again discussing all your expertise not only the epistemology i know you have a lot in there yes sir so i'm sorry i i wasn't able to hear that uh, okay like delay it's okay, sir. Well, once again, congratulations. And thank you so much for having your time and us sharing your expertise. And and uh, we're really excited to see you again sharing an other, not only the epistemology. I, do, I, 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 I believe you still have a lot of uh, knowledge about all researches that you love to share with us. Hopefully right, I sir? Can. Well, of course, uh, I'm willing to help. I'm willing to provide my experts that okay so thank you so much sir rafael and uh we do have a short video before sharing the certification process okay so before we share the certificate we're gonna see a short video sir go ma'am nazreen and congratulations once again sir rafael Okay, so to get your certificate for today's program, okay, today's certification process, instructions, certificate code required, today's program name, the, uh, the program name that you're going to encode is Epistemology and Methodology and Research with the code IGP8180. Please screenshot uh, this uh, information to get your e-certificate without code no one is eligible for the certificate okay i repeat without the code without the program name you cannot get your certificate for the desk session okay with code you can claim your certificate anytime and without an account on our website you can visit but you can't do anything functionally so just remember uh, certificate required today's program name, epistemology and methodology and research, and type down the code IGP8180. Okay, 
So do not forget these details. Okay. So once again, congratulations, Sir Rafael, for that wonderful sharing about epistemology and methodology in the research. So dear knowledge seeker, I would love to thank you all for the bottom of my heart. This is Tuesday and uh, 4 o'clock. This is Teacher Nori for attending today's session. Uh, it is um, optimistically, we have learned a lot about the method of research. And uh, I believe some of us is really conducting research now, not, not right now. So this is would be the perfect uh, session for us. Okay, and uh, we will use the knowledge that we are have right now to conducting research, so that our research would be aligned to what would be the target of our researches. And please don't forget to claim or collect your e-certificate and obviously give a check in with IGP. And please spread the information with your friends and colleagues. We hope to see you all again the next webinar. I am your host, volunteer your host, Teacher Nari Lee. And every Tuesday, 4 o'clock, goodbye. Thank you for your time.